Lord, my strength is in you, Lord. Praise be to the living God. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for joining us once again in our study of God's holy uh, and divine word. Um, we know that we serve a great God. We know that we serve an almighty God. We know we serve a God that has strength. We know we serve a God that has all the answers to all our issues in life. Uh, we just have to trust and believe Him. We thank you for joining us again. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. And we at Understanding the Father's Heart really desire that you truly understand the Father's Heart. Because when you understand the Father's heart, then you understand what your life is to be once you are a Christian. Because you see, outside of being a Christian, you just live your life just like uh, any cattle, any, any uh, uh, bird, any other animal that's in the earth today, or any creature that God has created. But when you become a child of the living God. You then change your whole perspective in life all around. Now you are focused on the things of God rather than the things of this earth. Things that you believe somehow that will bring you pleasure, but in the end it ultimately brings you death. But you don't understand that because we don't have the right perspective of who our God is and what our purpose is. Our purpose is not to be like the beast of the field or the creatures of the air or the fishes of the sea. They have no true purpose, but man and woman have been given purpose in this life and we must know and desire of what our purpose is. And my thought today and what I want to share with you today is what is your perspective today? What is life really today for you? What is in your future? What is your hope? What hope do you have about life today? Or is there any hope at all in your life? Have you given up hope and said, I don't have any hope at all of my life? Well, I want to say to you today, well, Jesus came into this earth and died so that we might have hope, that we might have a future outside of this life. Beloved, I don't know if you know this, but this life do end. It definitely do end. Um, have you been to any funerals lately? Have you uh, uh, seen uh, even uh Creatures dying around us? Have you looked at the news lately where people are killing and murdering and raping and stealing and robbing and doing everything that can possibly be done? And yet you are still here. Because why? Because God has protected you. But he's protected you so that you would have the same mindset that Jesus had. You would have the same mindset and perspective about life that Jesus had. When Jesus went to the cross, Jesus said these words, It is finished. It is finished on this side. His earthly duties were done. Well, I want to say to you today, you and I have earthly duties to do before we can say it is finished. Amen. So we have to look at it in this way. What is your perspective today? I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians and uh, the 13th chapter beginning at the 12th, uh, the 11th verse. The Word of God says this, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood things as a child. I even thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things for now for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known 
Paul is saying here that we have to have a positive perspective on who God is if we are going to live this life in a victorious way. We can't live this life victoriously. We're going to live this life just like the animals live their life if we don't put our perspective in order. And it's so very true that we must put our perspective in order. But as Paul says, writes, he says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I uh, was a child, I act like a child. But when I became a man, I should have become a man. I should have become someone who was seeking wisdom and understanding. But we don't necessarily always do that. And because we don't do that, we find ourselves facing different kinds of issues in our lives that we possibly would not have had to face. As the Word of God says, a man what sow, sow it, what, whatever he soweth, that shall he reap. In other words, our life outside of God's will, outside of God's protection, becomes our own invention. And our own invention always bring us down roads we were not expecting to be on. Amen. But when we understand what God's perspective is and we get in line with God's perspective, then we begin to look at things in a different way. Beloved, daily living can cause us to lose focus or perspective on life. Daily living. Just a grind of life. Just looking at things that take place in life. Just by putting things in our heads and our minds each and every day cause us to either focus or to become uh, 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 not focused or out of line with things. It's just like having a pair of glasses and seeing things colored in a certain way because our glasses are dirty. But when we clean our glasses, we begin to see in a different way. We begin to see the things that we may not have seen with dark and uh, sawed glasses. So we have to ask ourselves, how am I to see with the perspective that God wants me to see? Well, I want you to turn with me to Proverbs 4 and, and, and 6. Uh, I believe the Word of God tells us that very thing what we need to do. Proverbs 4, 5, and 6. The Word of God says this. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth, or turn away from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. In other words, don't forsake wisdom. And she, or wisdom, will preserve you. In other words, will keep you. Love wisdom, and she shall keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Many times people get wisdom, but they don't get understanding. And understanding is as important as wisdom. Because if you don't get understanding of the wisdom that you've been given, then you will not apply it to your life. And we need to apply wisdom to our life. Because life can get out of balance. It can become overwhelming at times. And that is for every person that walk upon this earth, that life can become so overwhelming that we really sometimes don't even know how to deal with it because it becomes as a weight upon our shoulders and it becomes stressful to us and very uh, debilitating. It takes us down and it makes us become people who we don't want to become. 
We become angry. We become anxious. We become stressed out. We begin to point fingers at other people as though they are the cause of our issues. But you know what, beloved? In life, when issues come upon us, many times we have a tendency to have to find blame. And you know, as we read in 1 Corinthians, it says, as we look through a glass darkly, and we look in that mirror, what do we see? Many times we don't see ourselves, but we see what we want to see. We see what we want to see. But our, the Lord God says to us today that he wants us to learn how to see who we really are. And when we see who we really are, then we can go about living our life in the right perspective that the Lord God desires for us to live in. We need a fresh perspective and a restored sense of balance. We need a fresh perspective and a restored sense sense of balance and we can get that take care of that please we can get that by asking the Lord God to do in our lives the things that he desired to do and for us to have a fresh perspective we have to understand that God desired to restore in us a new heart a new way of understanding, a new way of understanding him and understanding what his will is and understanding what his purpose is because that's what our life is. The devil don't care nothing about us. He doesn't care if we are here. He doesn't care if we die tomorrow. What he wants to do is to one day get us to a place where we are with him for eternity. And many of us, or many people, are falling under that guise. Because Satan has dulled their mind, has dulled their understanding, where they don't really understand the will and the purpose of God uh, for their lives. So it can become out of balance and overwhelming. But we need a fresh perspective. And how do we get that? fresh perspective. First, we get wisdom. We get the wisdom that God desire to give us. And if we get the wisdom that God desire to give us from that, we then learn how to understand what the will of God is. And what is the will of God? That God will glor be glorified through us. And we ought to be glorified through the Lord. And that's all what truly matters above everything else. Is that God be glorified uh, through it all. And the word of God tells us that if we get wisdom and we get understanding and forget neither or decline or turn away from wisdom of God. And we have to make sure. That we understand this fact. That we don't want to turn away from the wisdom of God. As the word of God says. Get wisdom and get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Forsake not wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. And this is so very important. Because negative thoughts can override and invade our thinking. Because negative thoughts are always present. They're always there. If we decide in our minds that we're not going to think positive toward life, then negative thoughts will invade our space. It will invade our mind. And so... As born-again believers, we are called to have the mind of Christ. And if we are to have the mind of Christ, that means we need to seek the wisdom of Christ. 
And if I am to seek the wisdom of Christ, that means that I not only just want to get the wisdom, but I want to get also the understanding of what was Jesus' perspective on this earth. Because he had a perspective. And his per perspective was to do the will of the Father. And after doing the will of the Father, as Jesus said, it is finished. So our perspective ought to be, what is truly the will of the Father? Because that's what I desire to do. I don't know how long I have on this earth to live. I don't have the slightest idea. I may be dead tomorrow. But beloved, did I do God's will today? That's what truly matters. Not what I'm doing for myself or what I, 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 I'm trying to accomplish in this earth, which I'm not saying anything is wrong with goals or having desires to do certain things for our lives or for our families. That's a good thing. God put that in us. But beloved, that is not to overwhelm us any longer. That ought not be our only desire that we have. Because if the word of God is true, that God says that he orders our steps, I just need to get up in the morning and do simply one thing and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I praise you. I glorify you. And then allow him to guide my steps. Because his word says, the Lord orders the steps of a righteous man. And we are righteous not because we have done everything right. We are righteous because we have become the children of God. And as long as we are the children of God, then God will order our steps. He just said, honor me, glorify me, acknowledge me. Don't go a day without acknowledging me. Some people go all day long without even thinking about the Lord. They fill their lives with all kinds of things and doing this and doing that and talking about how rushed life is. Well, beloved, I tell you what, when this life is over, and if you could be raised right there from the grave right then, I promise you, you will say then that, wow, I should have spent more time worshiping the Lord. I should have spent more time seeking after the ways of the Lord. I should have done that because, as the Word of God says, the dead cannot praise the Lord. The dead cannot worship the Lord. The dead cannot glorify the Lord. The dead cannot fulfill the Lord's will because they're dead. They're resting in what we call peace. So, beloved, we have to get the Lord's perspective of life. How important of that is. But if we don't allow negative thoughts to override our minds, because they can become habits, and we are constantly having negative thoughts in our head, just as we do with uh habits that we create in our lives. Now, for instance, uh, negative thoughts can take you to bed. Negative thoughts can wake you up. Negative thoughts can dri drive you throughout the day. Or you can have the right perspective in life and allow the Lord God to be the ruler of your thoughts throughout the day. We have a choice. It's our choice. When you're not a child of God, you're not a Christian, you really don't have a choice because your father is the devil. And if your father is the devil, you need to quickly come to an understanding that one day you will spend eternity with him. You have a choice. Every one of us have a choice of what direction we so desire to go. And beloved, if we have the right perspective today, we will go in the right direction. And beloved, God promises to order our steps. And he will calm us if we seek wisdom and seek understanding. Just as the word of God says, wisdom is the principal thing. Amen? Therefore, 
get wisdom. The Word of God telling us what to get. Get wisdom, and with all thy getting, make sure you get understanding. With all the getting that you do, with all the knowledge that you may acquire, if you don't get understanding, you are still without what you need. That's like someone, uh, uh, you may uh, purchase a car for, a dad purchase a car for a son or a daughter, what have you, and he just give her the keys and say, it's yours. Now, she got a certain amount of wisdom because she's seen her dad or mother driving the car and so she have an idea that you got to turn the steering wheel you got to put your foot on brakes to stop you got to do this you got to do that she's got all that and then the father said well you know what sweetheart that's not enough for you I'm going to send you to driver school so she goes to driver school and she learns how to drive she learns how to turn the steering wheel. She learns how to use the brakes. She learns how to do all these things. And then she says, I am ready. And the dad says to her, and mother says to her, look, I, don't you think you need to go a little bit longer? Maybe uh, two days ain't enough time. Oh, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, no problem. And then she takes uh, down the road with her new car. But you know what, beloved? And then she is stopped by the police. And the police said, well, why? You're going 55 in a 25. And then she says, well, they only taught me how to drive, not to obey the stop signs or the stoplights or anything else. They just taught me how to drive. Well, that isn't enough. You need to know the laws of driving a car. Amen? And so that's what we are talking about. You need more than just getting under, getting wisdom. We've all been given wisdom. How many times I, I look back for at my life, at the times that I was given wisdom, not only did my parents give me wisdom, but there are other people that were older than me that gave me wisdom. And I went about doing things my own way and then found myself in a messed up situation. How many times did that happen? And this is what we are talking about. We are talking about you don't just get wisdom because wisdom can go away. You've got to get understanding with wisdom. And sometimes it takes for us to run into a brick wall to stop us so that we will get the right perspective in life. It goes beyond wisdom, beloved. It goes to understanding it. You may know how to drive a vehicle, but if you don't know that the laws are involved with that, or that you have to have insurance also. Just because you drive doesn't mean there are not laws that are tied into it. Well, that's the same thing it is with God's holy and divine word and perspective. But beloved, remember, thoughts are very powerful. And if we don't watch it, thoughts can bring us down or they can bring us up. If we'll focus on the past all the time, it is bringing us down. If we focus on today, it is bringing us up to a brighter future. And our future is always brighter, beloved, because of who we believe in, who we trust, and who we honor. Amen. Praise be uh, to the living God. Beloved, I'd like to thank you for joining us. And i also like to thank uh, uh, my wife, Linda, and my stepson, uh, Peanut, for being with us today in our study today. Because usually I'm uh, um, doing these studies alone and there's no one 
with me at the time that I'm studying. So if uh, you heard a little movement, a little noise, little words you don't usually hear, well, that was uh, the reasoning for it. But, you know, we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. And if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, this is one of the greatest times that you can ask the Lord into your life because we're coming close to a new year. Why not bring in the new year, 2022, with a new perspective? A perspective of the love that God has for you. You are alive still because God uh, uh, kept you. You know, when I go back over my life, I look at the things that happened to me, and I know that it was God who kept me. I should be dead. I mean, I was in an accident that actually killed someone else. It was their fault, but I could have been dead. I've been hit in the face with a boom and literally tore my face off, and God kept me. I've been shot, and God kept me. I've been around. You know, a lot of people think, well, preacher, you ain't been through nothing. I've been through what most of you have been through 5, 10, 20 times more. But you know what? God kept me. He kept me because He kept me here for a purpose. And He has kept you for a purpose here. Because you could have been dead also. But God has kept you. And beloved, why not give your life to the Lord today? That would be the most blessing that you could have ever done. Amen. Praise be to the living God. Beloved, just ask the Lord into your life. Ask Him into your heart. And He will abide in your heart because he will know why it's turned your way if you ask him sincerely to reveal himself to you he will and you will know it because there's no way that God can will invade you and you will not know his presence you will know it so beloved we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you just accept the Lord and if you desire to uh, uh, speak with us, you can. You, you know what our text number is, 337-278-8205. And uh, our post office box is 186 Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. And beloved, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you until we have this opportunity to be with you once again. Be blessed in Jesus' name.